off a quick recap of the week. In a nutshell, it has been fucking depressing. <laughs> Most of the week was dominated by the conflict in Gaza, which has been escalating sharply over the past couple of days. As of the taping of this comedy show, 18 Israeli soldiers have been killed, as well as over 400 Palestinians, the vast majority of which appear to be civilians. This whole story is depressingly familiar. And perhaps the best way of illustrating that is with CNN's Anderson Cooper. Because <laughs> this... This was his report from last week. Hamas, which controls Gaza, is in backing down. Its rockets are reaching deeper into Israel. Now, if that rings a bell with you, it could be because you're remembering this. A number of rockets being fired um, from Gaza City, from the central area in Gaza City, uh, toward Israel. Here's the thing. That report was from 2012. Not that you'd know it, because Anderson Cooper looks and sounds exactly the same. <laughs> Much as he did in 2009, when he was asking exactly the same question that he's been asking all this week. I mean, the Palestinians blame Israelis for killing civilians. Israelis say, well, look, you know, we're, we're targeting military installations, Hamas installations, but they are hiding weapons in people's homes. They, they, they are meshed within the civilian population. Who's right here? Why is CNN even wasting money having him report on this when they could just literally rerun his coverage from five years ago and no one would notice? Somehow, somehow, in five years, this situation has not improved and his face has lost none of its virile yet tender <laughs> magnetism. In fact, you can even go back to 2006 when yet again, Israel and the Palestinians were trading rocket strikes, and guess who was there? More than uh, about a hundred uh, Katusha rockets and mortars uh, fell in and around this one town. How does he still look the same? <laughs> look, this was me back in 2006. <laughs> time has ravaged me. I have been ravaged by time. And, and I have spent zero time in Gaza. <laughs> If this week has taught us one thing, it's that the Middle East is truly the Anderson Cooper's face of geopolitical disputes. <laughs> in that, in defiance of all appeals to reason and human decency, it never fucking changes. <laughs> I, I actually think that in his attic, Anderson Cooper has a painting of himself as an old man in a peaceful Middle East. <laughs> now, <laughs> the, the Gaza... The Gaza dispute has been so depressing, it was enough to make you wish for any story to distract us. Unfortunately, on Thursday, we got one, when, for unknown reasons, Ukrainian rebels apparently used Russian weapons to shoot down an airliner. It was clearly an international tragedy, and you would think it might cause Vladimir Putin to do some serious soul-searching, or at least some soul-manufacturing. <laughs> but instead, he went a different way. Russian President Vladimir Putin says Ukraine is to blame, saying, quote, this tragedy would not have happened if there had been peace on that land. Yeah, maybe, but it's also worth noting this wouldn't have happened if you, Vladimir Putin, hadn't given the rebels those fucking missiles. <laughs> what, what great outcome were you anticipating from that exactly? Because no story in history has ever ended, and then an assortment of angry rebels were given military-grade weapons, they used them responsibly, and we all lived happily ever after. <laughs> that has never happened. Ever. There are... There are so many upsetting questions surrounding this tragedy, from why did Putin give them those weapons, to why did they shoot down that plane, to can you please change the subject, this is supposed to be a comedy show, the leftovers was less depressing than this. <laughs> but, but one of the most baffling questions of all involves the airline in question, Malaysian Airlines. The question is, why would they continue flying over a known war zone where, in fact, there have been three shootdowns in the past week? It's a very simple answer, I'm afraid. A little bit of lackadaisical behavior. And secondly, it's less fuel cost. Hold on. If it's true that some airlines choose to fly over a war zone to save money, then I'd like to take a moment to address the world's airlines and say, <clears throat> don't do that. <laughs> You've already got us paying surcharges for everything. 
$25 to check a bag, $5 for headphones, $10 to watch Katy Perry part of me with your $5 <laughs> headphones that do not work. So please, do feel free to offer us the option at check-in of a $35 surcharge to steer clear of any active fucking war zones. Oh, what do you think, honey? Shall we do it? Let's treat ourselves. We're on vacation. And finally, thankfully, we turn to some lighter news crippling gambling addiction in Singapore. <laughs> at, at the start of this year's World Cup, which, of course, Germany won, Singapore produced a powerful anti-gambling commercial. See if you can spot its one fatal flaw. I really can't wait for the World Cup. Who do you think is going to win it? My dad said Brazil will win. How about you, Andy? I hope Germany will win. Why? My dad bet all my savings on them. Germany won, kid! <laughs> Your dad's the greatest! He's the best! Hey! Why the long face? That kid is now the richest sad person since Kristen Stewart. <laughs> now, clearly, clearly, this was a little awkward, so Singapore actually created a second ad uh, where the boy is asked, Your dad's team won, did you get your savings back? To which he responds, No. Dad never stops. He wants to bet one more time. <laughs> but, yeah, of course he does. The guy's on a hot streak, kid. <laughs> and you know what? The only thing that can stop that is your negative attitude, you ungrateful little shit. <laughs> now, interestingly, Singapore actually has a long history of blowing it with their anti-gambling advertisements. Just, just take a look. I hope the Seahawks win the Super Bowl. My dad bet all our savings on them. Good luck. There's no way a second-year quarterback can beat future Hall of Famer Peyton Manning. Your dad's a complete zero. I'm gonna be homeless and die in a shopping cart. What's the matter, Andy? My dad bet all our savings again on California Chrome. To win this year's Triple Crown? No. He has to win the Kentucky Derby and Preakness, but then get fourth place in the Belmont Stakes. Wow. That's a very specific bet. I know. It's never going to happen. Fabrizio, can you move my hot stone massage to 3.30? Thank you, Fabrizio. Ciao. My dad's out of control. Shut up, Andy. Yes, yeah, shut up. Wait, this time, my dad bet everything we have that in the first half of the second week of July, news will break that Ryan Gosley will have impregnated Ava Mendez and that they're expecting a baby in October. Your dad is the best. Gambling is awesome. The big lesson from Singapore is gambling is terrible unless Dad is really feeling it. And now, this. And now, Last Week Tonight asks, how is this still a thing? This week, the Commonwealth Games. How is this still a thing? If you live in certain parts of the world, this week, you're looking forward to one thing. We've got the Commonwealth Games coming up. Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth Games. Welcome to the friendly games. In America, we not only don't know what the hell they're talking about, we couldn't tell you if you offered us $2,000. A new 50 pence piece marks the 20th celebration of these multi-country games to be held in the UK in 2014. <laughs> that would be the Commonwealth Games. Here's a question. What the fuck are the Commonwealth Games other than the winner of the creepiest mascot on Earth competition? Well, imagine the Olympics without the United States, China, and Russia. Then imagine a track meet dominated by sprinters from Wales. Wales! And you have the Commonwealth Games, a competition that's only open to members of the British Commonwealth. The Games began in the 1930s, just as the British Empire was falling flat on its face, and for some reason continue to this day. 
Once every four years, the world is treated to the spectacle of the queen showing her full emotional rage. From irritated in Victoria, to damp in Manchester, to bored in Melbourne. But why would she be bored? The Commonwealth Games feature all the world's top sports, such as squash, lawn bowls, competitive mountain biking, and netball which is basically what basketball would be if you didn't have the rights to play basketball. As many of these games are British derived, it's no wonder that England has soared all the way to the top of second place of the medal count. And for non-sports fans, the games also offer opening and closing ceremonies that speak to our sense of wonder. Specifically the wonder of what an off-Broadway version of the Olympic ceremonies would look like. So tonight, we salute this week's Commonwealth Games, the historic display of a once mighty nation, gathering together the countries it lost and finding a way to lose to them once more. So the next time you're on Jeopardy, and the answer is the Commonwealth Games, the only possible question is, how is this still a thing? Okay, moving on. Moving on. Our main story tonight concerns something Americans simply can't get enough of. Prison. We, we love to be entertained by it, from Orange is the New Black to seemingly MSNBC's entire weekend programming <laughs> uh, to the TNT classic Tim Robbins stands shirtless in the rain, the movie. We love prison so much, a shocking number of Americans are currently inside one, as we learned last week during a House Judiciary Committee hearing. Our nation now has the greatest number of prisoners of any country in the world. Nearly one in every 100 adults in America is in prison or jail. That's true. We have over two million people behind bars right now. We have more prisoners at the moment than China. Than China! <laughs> we don't have more of anything than China, <laughs> other than, of course, debt to China. And, <laughs> and it didn't... It didn't always used to be this way. Our prison population has expanded eightfold since 1970. The only other thing that's grown at that rate since the 70s is varieties of Cheerios. <laughs> Fuck you, fruity Cheerios! <laughs> you trumped up Fruit Loops and you know it! <laughs> and, and look, look. Our prison population has exploded for a number of reasons, from the dismantling of our mental health system to mandatory minimum sentence laws, which uh, help explain why 97% of people plead guilty to federal crimes rather than risk going to trial, to, of course, drugs. Because half the people in federal prison are there on drug charges, and it accounts for a quarter of admissions to state prisons. And, of course, it's tricky to know how to feel about all this, because, on the one hand, the war on drugs has completely solved our nation's drug problem, so that's good. <laughs> but, on the other hand, our drug laws do seem to be a little draconian and a lot racist. Because while white people and African Americans use drugs about the same amount, a study has found that African Americans have been sent to prison for drug offences at up to ten times the rate, for some utterly known reason. It... it reminds me... <laughs> It reminds me of a joke, you know, black people who commit drug offences, they go to jail like this, uh, whereas white people don't go to jail at all. <laughs> in fact, so many people, so many people are incarcerated in America right now that it's become one of the things that Sesame Street has to explain to children. My dad is... My dad's in jail. When I was about your age, my dad was incarcerated too. Incarcerated is when someone breaks the law, a, a grown-up rule, and then they have to go to jail or prison. We will be your friends. We'll help you through. You're not alone. Just think about that. <laughs> we now need adorable singing puppets to explain prison to children in the same way they, they explain the number seven or what the moon is. <laughs> And at least Sesame Street is actually talking about prison. The rest of us are much happier completely ignoring it. Perhaps because it's so easy not to care about prisoners. They are, by definition, convicted criminals. In fact, it's so easy not to care that we are really comfortable making jokes about one of the most horrifying things that can potentially happen to them. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, and do not, I repeat, do not, drop the soap. 
Look, doubloons. Don't drop them. You know what? If we were in prison, you guys would be like my bitches. <laughs> we're going to federal pound me in the ass prison. Plus, you got any idea what they do to eggs in San Ricardo prison? It ain't over easy. Oh. Oh. Do, do you get it? Do you get it? The egg's gonna get fucked against its will. That, that's why it's funny. No, wake up your children and explain that joke to them. They'll love it. <laughs> we are somehow collectively able to laugh about references to the fact that 4% of prisoners reported being sexually victimised in the past year. One in 25. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but think of it like this. If every time you bought two dozen donuts, one of them had been raped, you'd be pretty upset. And those are pastries. Prisoners are people. If, if, you, if you don't know a prisoner, though, or think that you're ever likely to become one, then their safety and health is not going to be high on your list of priorities. You don't need to know anything about the conditions that they live in. But you know who should know? Well, maybe the director of federal prisons. And yet, watch him almost comically struggle to recall a basic detail about one of the most mentally excruciating things prisoners can be subjected to, solitary confinement. How big is a cell? How big is the average cell in solitary? Say the, the average size? Cell, yeah, the size of the cell. How big is it? What is... I'm trying to get this... This is a human thing we're talking about. We've got a lot of statistics. How big is the cell? The, the, the average size of a cell is... I guess I'm trying to find... You're looking for the, the space of what the... Yes. The dimensions in feet and in inches. The size of the cell that a person is kept in. I want to get some idea of... I, I don't know... Am I asking this wrong? No! No, you're not! You are not asking it wrong. As far as I can remember, you're just asking him what the style of the fucking cell is. <laughs> but, but it was a long time ago. And, and to, to be fair, he did eventually get an answer. The average size should be uh, equivalent to... Um, which six by... four. What? Six by four? <laughs> a couple of things there. One, that was clearly a guess. <laughs> and two, six by four is barely an elevator. That, that is the length of a six-foot party sub by the length of the amount of that party sub that's left over the following day, because <laughs> nobody wants party subs. No, people put their hands all over them, they're disgusted. No one wants... That's not the point. That's not the point. But thankfully, a few minutes later, the record was corrected. For the actual, it's, it's 10 by 7 for the cell size. Ooh, 10 by 7. <laughs> Step this way, Your Highness. <laughs> Plenty of room for a ping pong table and an imaginary opponent as your mind slowly becomes untethered. <laughs> What is clear so far is that we are doing a terrible job of taking care of people that it is very easy for all of us not to care about. But here's the thing. Increasingly, we aren't taking care of them at all. Private subcontractors have, have steadily been taking over certain services, like the Aramark Corporation, who provide food to prisons uh, and a promise that, with Aramark, you can expect more. More savings. <laughs> and, and, hey, look, when you're being thrifty with food costs, What's the worst that can happen? Records show 65 instances where Aramark employees failed to provide food or ran out. The private vendor Aramark changed recipes to include cheaper, sometimes substandard ingredients. Aramark Correctional Services made headlines recently after maggots were found in food served at prisons here in Michigan. That is not good. The only time when you are happy to hear the words maggots were found is when you are a maggot whose family was lost at sea. <laughs> we floated three days on a piece of bread, but we never lost hope. <laughs> and, and it's not just food being privatised, it's prison health care too. Arizona tried that. Guess how it turned out. Medical spending in prisons dropped by $30 million and staffing levels plummeted. 50 people died in Arizona Department of Corrections custody 
in just the first eight months of this year. Compare that to 37 deaths in the previous two years combined. 50 deaths? At this point, you could hire the people who pretend to be doctors on Grey's Anatomy, and you would probably have a lower mortality rate and a lot more intrigue. <laughs> Cutting costs has led to some incredible things happening in Arizona. One prisoner had a C-section in jail, and this is how she says they treated her. They decided to use sugar, kitchen sugar. What do you mean, they used kitchen sugar? Um, the packets, like McDonald's, the sugar, they would open it, pour it inside, and put um, gauze over it, and tape it up. And I'd had to do that for like three weeks. And they poured them in your C-section? Yeah. Did they tell you why they were doing that? One of the doctors learned it from, I don't even know. I don't know. But basically, it's a home remedy. Sugar was used to treat wounds before the advent of antibiotics back in the early 1900s. Yeah, but then we all decided it was no longer an acceptable medical practice. <laughs> like curing a child's cough with heroin. Well, look, he's not coughing anymore. Yeah, he's not really doing much of anything anymore. And I can't find any of the good silver. But look, look. You will never pay a political price for treating prisoners like this woman badly. You don't even need to pretend to care. Here is how one Arizona lawmaker responded to her story. That doesn't sound like a true allegation. That sounds ridiculous. You know, prisoners have, uh, you know, 24-7 to think up allegations and write letters. I'm not saying that, uh, that some of them can't have a basis in fact, but you got to take them with a grain of salt, or in the case of the hospital, maybe a grain of sugar. Somewhere in hell, Satan just sharpened his pitchfork and said to his secretary, do me a favor, Janice, and let me know when that guy gets here, OK? <laughs> I just want to be ready. Many states are even contracting out entire prisons. Nearly 9% of prisons are currently run by private firms like Geo Group and Corrections Corporation of America, who had combined revenues of over $3 billion last year. They're publicly traded. And while their marketing materials emphasize how much they do to help their prisoners rebuild their lives, their pitch to investors has been a little bit different. In a recent investor presentation, CCA pitches its unique investment opportunity. Another reason investing in the jailing of people makes good financial sense? High recidivism. Oh, that's... That is a great way to reassure your investors. Look, 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 we see your concerns, you know, what if we fully rehabilitate the prisoners and they become fully functional members of society? Well, don't worry, that's not the kind of company we're running here. Don't worry. <laughs> Once we're done with these prisoners, they're like human boomerangs. They're broken right in the middle and they keep coming back. <laughs> the, the key problem with running prisons as businesses is that prisons are then run as businesses. Pay and staffing ratios are so much lower that a geo group youth facility in Mississippi sometimes had just two officers overseeing as many as 256 prisoners. That facility eventually closed, but only after a federal judge wrote that physical and sexual abuse was rampant there because its operators had allowed a cesspool of unconstitutional and inhuman, inhuman acts and conditions to germinate. Now, I know that Geo will say that presents an unbalanced picture of their company, so in the interest of balance, I will point out that they got an award from the state of Florida citing their bold and innovative cost-saving business practices. <laughs> Although I think we all know when the state of Florida gives you an award, that award is basically sarcastic. <laughs> in fact, uh, a quick side note. The award was signed by Florida Governor Rick Scott, who has led the drive for prison privatization in his state, but on one condition. What I've said all along is that you know, this is an opportunity for uh, the taxpayers of the state uh, to save money. There's no way we'll do this if we don't save money. As you know, what the bill says is that if we don't save at least 7%, uh, we don't do prison privatization. Hey, 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 hey! Listen, if you think Rick Scott is going to look the other way for a company with a history of the physical abuse of minors for savings of a mere 6%, you don't know Rick Scott, OK? <laughs> Ricky needs seven. Ricky wants seven. <laughs> Ricky likes seven, OK? Now, now, if you happen at all to be interested in asking Rick Scott about the conduct of the Geo Group, for goodness sake, 
don't do it tomorrow night. He's busy. Uh, we actually checked, and he's going to be at a fundraiser at the home of, and this is true, the CEO of Geo Group. I believe the theme of that fundraiser is a cesspool of unconstitutional and inhumane acts. <laughs> Look, this is... This is all so depressing. Private prisons are bad, yes, but the whole system just seems fundamentally broken. You know what? I, I think, if you don't mind, I need a minute. I, I actually need some help understanding this, if you don't mind. Oh. Hey, John. Uh, you seem sad. Yeah. yeah I, I am sad, Timmy. It's just... You know, I've, I've been looking at the prison conditions in America and the whole system is just so horribly broken. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Uh, my daddy's in jail right now for a low-level drug offense. You see, that's exactly what I'm talking about, Timmy. That's crazy. Well, yeah. my daddy's in jail because he killed four people. Yeah, well, oh, 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 okay, he's actually a dangerous individual who needs to be in jail, so that's not really the same yeah, thing. No, 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 no. My daddy's in jail and people pay money to see him. Yeah, that's actually a zoo. That's different. <laughs> He's in a zoo, yeah, okay? Yeah. It looks the same to him. Well, let's not conflate the two, okay? Oh, he's gone, okay. Hey, uh, hey, hey, John, how badly broken is the prison system? Yeah! Well, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but one prison actually put sugar in a woman's C-section. <laughs> wait a second. What's the C-section? Oh, yeah. boy. Um... Oh, wait, 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 you mean, like, the letter C, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly <laughs> what I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's... Mr. Mm -hmm. Oliver, mm -hmm. would it make you feel better if we sing about it? Yeah. Well, it can't hurt. Can yeah. Let's hear yeah. yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It's a hard truth about incarceration. Prisons are needed for a civilized nation. But mandatory minimums for heroin and crack. Stack the system against Hispanics and blacks. Mm -hmm. Our prison population is bigger than Slovenia. Cause we put people in jail instead of treating schizophrenia. It's true. No, I don't. They put my dad in jail because they say he's a monster. Oh, <laughs> so what, 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 what did he do? Nothing. They just said he looked like a monster. Well, that's racial profiling and that's wrong too, yeah. OK? Yeah. It's a fact that needs to be spoken. America's prisons are broken. Prison conditions are a national disgrace. With violence. And maggots. And possibly rain. And we shouldn't lock up reptiles just to look at their face. Those are zoos. Those are zoos. Your dad is an alligator in a zoo. Uh, uh, I'm a crocodile. I'm a crocodile. Oh, uh, uh, Jesus, here we oh, go. Boys. <laughs> oh, we all oh, look alike, God. right? Yeah. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. That, no, no, you can't put that on me. That is clearly not what I was saying. No. That's so ignorant. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, as we were saying, it's a fact that needs to be spoken. America's prisons are broken. America's broken prison system is brought to you by decades of neglect, mm. a lack of political courage, and a generous donation by the Geo Group. Yeah. As well mm. as viewers like you. Yeah. Yeah.